so a lot of questions on the MCAT will involve analyzing different quantities in circuits, uh, resistors, capacitors, batteries, and other items like that. And being able to figure out how various quantities change as you change the different components of a circuit. And the major things that you have to know about are Ohm's law, the power law, and the capacitance laws. And I think the best way to teach this is with a, a simple mnemonic device. And so what I've done here is I've drawn three triangles. And uh, the sentence that I use to remember them is Irv is a VIP because his CV is top quality. And the way that this works is in any of these triangles, if you're trying to figure out what one of these quantities is, you just cover that up and look at the relationship of the other two. So for example, if we want to know what uh, resistance is here, we cover up the R of resistance and we see that it equals V over I. If we want to know what V equals, V equals I R. I equals V over R. And so if you just remember these triangles and Irv is a VIP because his CV is top quality, then you have a lot of the permutations of the major, major formulas that you're going to be analyzing in terms of circuits. One thing to recognize is that the current, I, is the charge over time that is passing through a particular point. And it's defined as the direction of flow of the positive charge. So if you have something where electrons are moving in this direction, the current will be moving in the other direction because the negative electrons move opposite the flow of the positive current. So that's something to be aware of. But other than that, if you know Irv is a VIP because his CV is top quality, that will allow you to derive a lot of the major, major formulas that you're using when handling some more complex circuit problems. So now we'll take Irv is a VIP because his CV is top quality and take it a step further to evaluate the contributions of major circuit elements. And so the two major elements that you'll be dealing with, other than the battery, which provides voltage, are resistors, which generate power, and capacitors, which store charge. And so we already know that power equals V times I. So the power of a resistor is going to be equal to the voltage gradient across it times the current traveling through it. Now we're not always given V and I. And so sometimes if instead of I, we'll substitute V over R. And that will give us V times V over R, which equals V squared over R. That's another way of representing power. And if we want, we can also substitute instead of V, we will substitute IR, and so there we'll have IR times I, or I squared R. And those are all the different ways that you could be able to derive the power generated by a resistor when given any of these individual quantities. Now, for the potential energy of a capacitor, it's equal to QV over 2. And uh, this one's probably worth just memorizing. Uh, you can also look at it as the potential energy formula in a constant field, which is uh, going to be QV divided by 2. And uh, the derivation of that is not something you'll be responsible for on the MCAT, but you will be responsible to know that the potential energy stored by a capacitor equals QV over 2. And uh, if you substitute out uh, V, for example, V is Q over C, then you'll end up with Q squared over 2C. And if you, instead of uh, Q here, if you replace that with CV, then what you'll have is CV squared divided by 2. So with this, Irv is a VIP because his CV is top quality. We have nine versions of these formulas here. Plus, we are able to derive all the different ways that you can represent power on uh, any resistor type of problem. And if we bring in the potential energy stored by a capacitor, then this allows us to substitute all of the ways you can calculate the energy stored by a capacitor. And as soon as you can do that, you have the ability to analyze a lot of different components of circuits and to understand how each of them contribute to what the circuit is accomplishing. So remember that resistors generate power. That's the important thing. And that you can find this power formula or substitute in these to 
to get variants of that. And remember that capacitors store energy because of those two plates, and you can represent that in all of these different ways just by substituting the V and Q into this potential energy of a capacitor formula. And there you have all the major building blocks to analyze any circuit question that you come up with.